Well, first video of the year, everybody. I'm gonna do a uh, spring tune-up. Most people do this in the fall before they put it away. I'm doing it in the spring because I'm lazy and I didn't feel like spending all this money five months ago. So um, what we're gonna do this year, I'm not gonna show most of it because I've already got other videos showing that. What we're gonna do this year is a oil change, fuel filter, gear lube. I've got the oil filter here and uh, we're gonna do this year the thermostat and the accessory belt as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the first three things first because I've already done other videos doing those and uh, we'll see you in a little bit and then we'll do uh, we'll try the belt and then we'll do the thermostat as well just to show you how I do that. So to get at the two things that I'm doing this year it's it's the three-year maintenance they want it says on the side here replace accessory drive belt I did the impeller already in the fall I haven't done the thermostat yet it wants you to inspect that every year for what it's worth it doesn't look like it's a difficult job I'm gonna replace it it's all up on top here so we're gonna go and get the sockets we need and uh, get the top plastic cover off and we'll have a look up here. Okay, the eight millimeter works on this. So we're gonna pop these off. Oh my God, you're an idiot. All right, we're gonna change out this belt up here. You have a pivot right here. So you're gonna loosen this bolt and you're gonna take this bolt out and, the, and uh, this thing here should uh, slide outwards and you'll be able to get this belt off. All right, first let's loosen this bolt. Okay, just a couple turns. And then this guy here, This one here's got to come right out. So we're going to take this, it might take a bit of pressure. You pull it out, loosens the belt, belt comes off, we'll go get the new one. All right, we're going to take the new one, you line it up on these teeth all the way around. Okay, put some pressure on this. Slide that around and this, make sure it's all seated. There's little grooves in here that have to line up with the grooves in these. And then you push it back on, get your bolt, put some more anti seize. In she goes. And voila, you're all done. So we'll snug this one down before we tighten that other guy up. Go under here. Snug it tight. Go up here. Put that one tight. And voila, that's how easy your accessory belt is. Once every three years, they say to do this. Okay, the next thing we're gonna deal with is the thermostat. Now I've noticed an issue here because they gave me the part. Is there's a clamp here. All right, I've come up top. This is the thermostat housing. They've given me the whole new housing. What I've just noticed though is it's got this type of a hose clamp that I don't have. So I need to see I have something that will work in this clamps place and if I do then I should be okay to take these two bolts off pull this assembly off and get that off so let's see what we can do here you know what I found I found a hose clamp actually so I may actually just redo the housing let's see if this works All right as luck would have it the same size. One, two. 
All right, let's have a look here. And there's nothing in here because this uses the water from the lake, so there should be no water or fluid in here. So there's a rubber O-ring in there that looks like it's holding this in. Pull this right off. That'll probably hold it on a little better anyway. Let's do that. Let's put this back in. Okay. Put the screw. We'll put this. It's going to push down and go like this. All right, and this rubber seal is brand new. Everything's brand new here. That's seated properly. We'll shove this back in here. Right, we'll shove that back in. Well done. Get them started again. And get them started first. And then you can get the, they both should get started easily enough. All right. Like this. We might get a new clamp for this here. But for now, that's nice and tight. That's gonna hold. All right. And that's it, belt and thermostat. And that pretty much covers everything. I've done it now. Uh, I did the plugs uh, last year. I did the impeller last year. I do the oil change and gear oil every year. And uh, these they say every three years. So that's all good to go again. It's a heavy duty amp. That's a 60 amp alternator there. Good power. And yeah, I think the, that's the once over. We'll just put everything back together now. All right, let's uh, throw the cover back on and put the motor back together. Okay, those are started. And that takes care of the top. We're going to do the oil and the gear oil now and I'm going to inspect the hub and everything else and then we'll put the motor back together. So every year I go over the whole boat from front to back and there's little things every summer that are going to need adjusting. Um, I always tighten the bolts down on this. I went back to the two blade prop on this. I love this prop nut. I think it makes it run a lot smoother. Uh, different people have different opinions on it. The skag was all banged up. I straightened it out, sanded it down, and I put a new coat of paint on the skeg on the prop here. Everything else is good. I always take the props off every year anyway, just to make sure there's nothing in there and test it all out. And that's all working good. Another big maintenance item this year is these puppies. I had a blowout on this side on my way back from a fishing trip in the fall. Didn't even barely make it, just over three years they, the, the stock tires on the trailer made it. They're, they're garbage. I'll give you my advice is these come with 65 mile an hour tires, some cheap usually knock off something. It's the same as your car, right? They always put the cheapest crap on and then you kind of have to upgrade it as time goes. So I made the mistake of, you know, 65 mile an hour. I mean, you can get up to 70 or 75 sometimes when you're dragging your trailer. 
These are good for, I believe, 87 miles an hour now. These are the Goodyear Endurance. Uh, way thicker sidewall, way better quality. They weren't, aren't the cheapest things out there, but I'm not going through a blowout again. That was ridiculous. The other thing I had to change is when your tire blows out, the, the brake lines for your surge brakes, the rubber snapped one of them. So they're pretty easy to find. You grab these off of Amazon for my particular trailer. It's just a standard brake hose. Screws back on, it's the exact same length and everything's good as new. So I had, and of course you gotta get a buddy to come help you. Thank you, Sean, by the way. You gotta get a buddy to come help you reprime the, the brake system. Other than that, everything in here is in pretty good shape this year. I try to open all the compartments up when it's in here for the winter so that everything can air out. There's one more thing I'm going to do to this later this summer. So we go back here to the power center. What I did when I bought this, and keep in mind four years ago, lithium was still an iffy thing. There were people having problems with fires and that, but the consensus now is that lithium is the way to go for a number of reasons. And I know people hate the price and they say theirs works fine. The thing about lithiums, and what I wanna do is replace this one, but they hold the charge longer. So you'll notice when you're using AGMs or wet cell batteries that you start off and you're at 13.2 volts and by the end of the day, you're luckier if you're at 11.7 or 11.8. Lithium will go all the way down to zero at 12.8 it will hold it all day whereas these ones deteriorate as the day goes on the other thing that i've done here so right now i'm running everything off of this this is a really good battery i haven't had a problem in three and a half years with just pretty much running everything off this all the time uh, keep in mind i have three graphs you know i have a nimia network i have a vessel view link i have you know charging ports all over there that are all running off one bus so what i'm going to do I'm going to replace this. Dakota has a 135 amp hour battery and that would be absolutely perfect in here. I can keep this guy for probably six or seven more years before I have a problem with it. Just run the main motor and the base electronics in the boat off of this. Keep them on a switch, put the 135 amp hour over here and run all of my sounder electronics into here and run it off of this all day. And generally speaking, the boat will be recharging the AGM, but I will have the option to go to both if I want to join them both together or just run everything. So, and, and then I'll use the battery switch for that. That'll be later this summer. We're going to rewire and clean up in here a little bit. I do look through the back here. I've noticed an issue with this boat. If I have four guys in it, and you got to figure the weight's probably, you know, 200 pounds each. It's, it could be seven, 800 pounds of people in here, plus their gear. But I have noticed that water somehow gets in when it's loaded down with people. If it's just me, it's not. So my guess is it's coming up and going in here and seeping down. I don't think I have any problems down here. Um, it's very difficult to get inside to make sure that everything's still holding together inside under there. But I might, when I redo the battery later this summer, have a good look around in there. The easiest way to tell if you have a boat, if your boat has a leak, as stupid as it sounds, is you fill the inside up with water while it's sitting out, out in your driveway. And then you, you, know, you just put your hose in and just fill it up a little bit. It's designed to have water in it. That's not really gonna cause a problem, but you, then you can go around the outside of the boat and see if there's any dripping anywhere or anything like that. And I may do that later this summer too, just to get on top of that. But otherwise, everything looks good at the back here. I always check both of these. I also wanna upgrade this. This is a TM150. Um, transducer, it's sonar only, it's Airmar. And I think it's a TM185, which has high chirp that I'd want to upgrade to, but it's like seven or $800. And this, honestly, this here works really well. And the, the beauty of this is it's got a wedge on the front, so you get on plane. So you do want to have a look at these, make sure all the bolts are still good, nothing's come loose. And we're still fine back here. Might clean this tape up up here. And that's probably a good, good roundabout of the boat. I don't have anything else. I also want to upgrade the seat pedal still here. But that's another friggin' eight hundred dollars. But you get an air ride seat pedestal, and even better yet, it would be better to have a captain's chair. If anybody out there is selling one or something, send me a message. A captain's chair has the actual armrests on it. This thing has very little bounce to it. It's the stock pedestal. It is an air ride pedestal, but I don't get any bounce at all out of this thing. Um, and I also have problems with some of these buttons on the front. It's pretty cheap. The stock one that comes with it. 
I, I'm always surprised with these boats that the, the level of quality, as much as I love this boat, when they pump it out of the factory, like it's, it's almost like they're giving you something that, well, if you don't like it, what else, go somewhere else. That, there's a lot of stuff you have to redo and keep on top of on a boat. You know, a car, you can drive it for five, six years and nothing even starts rattling. On a boat, you're not going to make it through the first summer and something somewhere is going to be broken. Part of that's what you're doing, but part of that is they're, you know, they've got a long way to come on boats. I love this thing, but they, I, I still think they got a ways to go. So that's two pretty easy jobs you could do. Uh, again, I'm not a mechanic. I'm sure there's people watching this that are just cringing at what I'm doing. But uh, like I said, they're easy jobs. So you now, based on what I've done myself, it's easy to do your own oil, your own gear oil, your own uh, belt, your own spark plugs, your own, uh, most of the basic stuff, right? If it, unless it starts throwing up engine codes, there shouldn't be a reason to be taking it in. You know. If, you don't want to risk breaking something, which I'm perfectly willing to risk breaking stuff, then you might want to take it in. Uh, anyhow, I'll see you in a couple weeks. I'm going to go spring trout fishing out in Lake Ontario, probably with my daughter and her boyfriend. Uh, so we'll see you there. <laughs>